Okay, in our video series on infectious medicine, in this video, we are going to talk about cerebral abscess. In my previous videos on encephalitis and meningitis management, we talked about the treatment and managements in detail. In this video, we are going to talk about the presentation and causes of cerebral abscess and how do you treat cerebral abscess. First of all, what is cerebral abscess? Cerebral abscess is basically a focal suppurative infection of the brain parenchyma, which is surrounded by a vascularized capsule. It is basically infection of the brain parenchyma, which leads to destruction of the brain tissue. And it is also surrounded by a vascularized capsule. It usually presents with fever, headache, and focal neurological deficits. The patient will be having on and off fever and the headaches will be morning or nocturnal headaches associated with vomiting. And if the abscess is rupture, the patient will have worsening headaches with the signs of meningism. In focal neurological deficits, patients will commonly have oculomotor nerve deficits and abducent nerve palsy. Coming to the causes and source of infection for cerebral abscess. The organism involved in cerebral abscess is mainly streptococcus in 60 to 70% of the cases. Toxoplasmosis is also seen in severe HIV patients with CD4 count less than 50 to 100. And bacteroides can also be found in 20 to 40%, but you must remember streptococcus is the main cause. How does it spread to the brain? How does this infection get to the brain? If the patient has otitis media or mastiditis, you would see temporal lobe abscess or abscess in the cerebellum of the patient. If the patient has ethmoidal sinusitis, it would spread to the frontal lobe of the patient. And if the patient has dental infection, that dental infection will also spread to the frontal lobe. It all depends on the venous drainage. Usually the infections involving the face and ear, their venous drainage is toward the brain. And that venous drainage will carry all the bacteria to the brain resulting in cerebral abscess. Cerebral abscess can occur in the brain due to hematogenous route as well. In hematogenous route, the blood carries the bacteria to the brain and that abscess will be present around the middle cerebral artery. There will be multiple abscess in the region of middle cerebral artery distribution in the gray-white metal junction. That is a classical presentation of hematogenous spread of the infection to the brain. Whenever blood carries infection, the abscess will be seen around the middle cerebral artery. So depending upon the location of infection, certain areas of the brain are affected. Coming to the diagnosis of cerebral abscess. Diagnosis of cerebral abscess imaging is the best initial modality in which MRI is the most accurate test. CT can be done in emergency, but if MRI is available, MRI will give you more detailed picture and MRI is the most accurate test. In MRI, what you would see is that you would see a central hypodense area and you would see a peripheral ring enhancement. The central area is actually the necrotic area and there will be a peripheral ring enhancement on the MRI. Now we will see a picture of MRI in which you can easily appreciate that there is a ring of enhancement and there is central area, central necrotic area on the MRI. So this is a classical picture of cerebral abscess. And if someone asks you about the best confirmatory test of the cerebral abscess, that is the biopsy. Biopsy is the best confirmatory test and it distinguishes that whether it is an abscess or it is a tumor. And with biopsy, you can also take cultures of the abscess. In the treatment of cerebral abscess, the main treatment is surgical drainage with biopsy. Surgical drainage through burr hole is the mainstay of treatment in cerebral abscess. Cerebral abscess has a thick capsule surrounding it. Therefore, if you give empiric antibiotic therapy, that empiric antibiotic therapy usually cannot even penetrate the capsule. Therefore, early surgical drainage and biopsy is more effective, but antibiotic therapy can be given. Empiric antibiotic therapies are usually given before surgical drainage can be done. In empiric antibiotic therapy for pyogenic abscess, you can give it for six to eight weeks and it is given through IV route. 
and it is given if the brain abscess is small less than 2.5 cm if there is history of symptoms of less than 2 weeks if there are no signs of in increased intracranial pressure if the abscess is small in that case you can give empiric antibiotic therapy and expect that that um, that antibiotic therapy will cause reduction of the size of cerebral abscess but if the cerebral abscess size is huge if it is causing signs of increased intracranial pressure it is putting pressure on the brain if the history is for more than 2 weeks then in that case the antibiotic therapy is not very effective in that case you have to go for surgical drainage in initial empiric therapy you can give third generation phallosporin with metronidazole with or without vancomycin intracranial pressure is usually raised in these patients due to the presence of cerebral abscess which is exerting pressure on the brain dexamethasone can be used for short courses the use of dexamethasone in in such patients with increased intracranial pressure it's controversial but a short course of dexamethasone can improve the patient's clinical status other than that if the patient is having seizures you need to give seizure prophylaxis with anticonvulsants in summary we talked about the presentation of cerebral abscess we talked about the organisms causing it we talked about the spread of bacteria to the brain through direct route of otitis media ethmoidal sinusitis dental region and via blood which is mainly around the middle cerebral artery region we talked about the imaging mri as the most accurate test with peripheral ring enhancement and central necrotic area biopsy the best confirmatory test early surgical drainage is the mainstay of the treatment empiric antibiotic therapy can be given if the brain abscess is small if the history of symptoms is less and no signs of intracranial pressure raised initial empiric therapy and pressure management with dexamethasone a short course seizure prophylaxis with anticonvulsants If you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my videos on meningitis and encephalitis and other videos on infectious medicine the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much